<laughs> Simpsonville, South Carolina. A woman sits alone on her front steps, sobbing on the phone with her father. Mike just called me his stepmom is dead. <laughs> She's battling a panic attack just after receiving news of her mother's sudden passing. <laughs> Across the street, her neighbor, who she had only met once before, hears her cries and notices she's in distress. <laughs> when the neighbor arrives, without hesitation, she begins to hug and console her grieving friend as if she were a child of her own. It's a true act of compassion. What's more, the Good Samaritan continues to check in via text during the following days to make sure her neighbor and family are doing okay. That's what neighbors are for. There was a big issue in my city going on where these bikes were getting stolen. A concerned Good Samaritan, who will call Sam, wishes to remain anonymous for his safety. But he's watched many bikes being stolen from his neighborhood for years and no one doing anything about it. I was kind of just sick of seeing it happen. I was sick of seeing people get away with it. Um, the police weren't really doing too much about it. So Sam gets an idea. And with a sidekick, they set their wheels in motion. Me and my neighbor thought that we would try to stop this theft by going out and looking for these bikes that had been stolen and trying to recover them ourselves. Sam and the neighbor browse stolen bike postings online. Then the duo prowl the neighborhood, sometimes for hours, hoping to spot one. In one evening, while Sam is out patrolling alone, he does. So when I saw these guys ride by, I had a huge adrenaline rush, of course. The neighbor, Sam's sidekick, is at home. If I confirm that's the bike, you gotta call the cops, all right? And I'm gonna tell you where I am. But Sam is able to patch into him through his helmet phone and let him know this is not a drill. It's the bike, it's the bike. There were a ton of identifications on this bike telling me that it was the stolen bike. And I'm a little nervous because I'm not sure who is on these bikes. There's more than one of them. Uh, maybe they have a weapon. Where'd you get that bike? Uh, Cops are on the way, man. I know that bike's stolen. Just leave it there and go. It's your best bet. Sam advises the rider to surrender the bike to him. But instead, they pull over. Sam gives his coordinates to the neighbor. Get the cops here right now. I'm at the, I'm at the taco truck by that Home Depot. And tells him to have the police meet him there. But as they wait, the neighbor calls back with bad news. Call right now, get him here, all right? We're talking right now. I called, they said they're not coming. What do you mean they're not coming? I got the bike. This good Samaritan is now the lone Samaritan. I didn't want to approach the situation alone. I just wanted to let the police know where these people were so they could apprehend them themselves. One of the riders pulls out a phone and hands it to Sam. The rider on the stolen bike ended up pulling out his phone and calling the person who had stolen the bike in the first place, the original thief. Sam gets on with the thief who stole the bike. Who? I already talked to Levi and um, I have to uh, return the bike tomorrow. Well, look, man, I got the bike right now and I, I have the key. I can take it for Levi, man. Levi is the bike's owner. And now that the thief knows he's been caught, he wants to return the bike back to Levi personally and apologize or so he claims. But I'm taking this bike with me. The cops are on their way. No, you can't return that bike. But Sam insists on bringing the bike back himself and is not backing down. I don't care, man. This bike's stolen. It's coming with me. Sam believes if he lets them take the bike back, neither he or the owner will ever see it again. We know your name. We know your address and everything, bro. I, I'd, I would take off if I were you. I don't give no All right, man. Uh, did you buy this bike or did he give it to you? Because you should get your money back if you bought it. The thief may not care, but the two riders do. They talk to the thief on the phone and soon hand the keys over to Sam. I don't want you guys to get it. If you didn't steal it, I don't want you in trouble, all right? So you guys can go, because we already have the name of the guy. The two people on the bikes decide to go their own way and leave the bike with me. All right, you guys, you guys be safe, all right? I'm sorry you got mixed up in this, all right? If you didn't steal the bike, that's all right, but I'm taking it. We'll, Thank you. We'll take care of the, the, the guy. Okay. I ended up getting a $500 reward for getting the bike back.
Later on, this footage was used in court and the thief was charged with many counts of vehicle theft. But putting a neighborhood criminal behind bars comes with a price. So I am a little worried of what may be done to me by the thief or his acquaintances if they find out my true identity. This neighborhood Good Samaritan is happy to remain anonymous. And as long as Milwaukee thieves continue stealing bikes, the Good Samaritan and his sidekick neighbor will keep taking them back. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> An apartment dweller in Seattle, Washington, has noticed a woman behaving erratically on the street below and starts filming her. <gasps> She's going pants. Oh my God, is it? No, 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 stop, stop. She collects a handful of rocks and goes running to terrorize the building across the street. You can't see it because of the building's awning, but she's throwing those rocks at an elderly woman. Unfortunately for this nasty neighbor, a passing Good Samaritan just witnessed the attack, and he plans to do something about it. Oh. The man comes darting across the street, tackles the attacker, and sends her crashing into a fire hydrant. Yeah. Yeah. After giving her a scolding, the man checks on the elderly woman to make sure she wasn't hurt by any thrown rocks. Yeah, oh, he just With the situation under control, the unidentified woman offers a feeble apology and is sent on her way. With neighbors like this guy, maybe she'll think twice before harassing this neighborhood again. A delivery driver named Nathan Wilkins prides himself on knowing all the different routes in his neighborhood. Being a delivery driver, I've gone through this neighborhood pretty often. It's, it's just a really tight neighborhood. On a brisk January morning, Nathan's first delivery takes him on a familiar route through town. You've got a lot of houses, you've got a lot of kids running around in the yards and stuff. People feel safe in this neighborhood. But on this morning, Nathan notices something odd ahead of him. I had a uh, package to drop off not far from where I was, and then I noticed all of a sudden I was doing 20 miles per hour behind somebody. Oh, Lord. The car in front is weaving back and forth over the center lines. I just kind of followed along behind him, and the first thing I thought, oh, he's on his phone, he's, you know, distracted. Nathan keeps behind the car as the driver becomes more erratic. <laughs> Genuinely, oh my, oh no, 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 no. The car nearly misses two oncoming vehicles and shows no signs of stopping. <laughs> me, dude. Get off the road. Oh, Lord. We went around the turn and I see a utility truck coming towards us and he starts to drift into the next lane. Oh no, this guy is about to hit this oncoming utility truck doing like 50 miles per hour. Nathan slows down and braces for what's about to happen. I was absolutely terrified. A truck that size, if they hit him going 50 miles per hour, it would have been disastrous. The truck swerves at the last second, narrowly avoiding a head-on collision. I'm so glad that the guy driving the utility truck had the reaction time he had. But the next driver might not be as quick, so Nathan does whatever he can to help his fellow neighbors. If I saw an imposing car coming, I would flash my lights, I'd turn my hazard lights on, you know, do my best to try to give them a heads up. But finally, the car begins to slow. After following this guy for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, he finally just drifts into a guardrail. And there they go. So I pulled off into a houses, driveways there. And by the time I made it back to his car, one woman was already on the phone with 911. A nearby neighbor is already assisting the man, but he's barely responsive. Hey, uh, he looks like he may be in his maybe 60s, 70s. Can you, do you mind pushing your brake and putting it in park? We were there with the man for a good five minutes or so, working with him, just trying to make sure he's okay. I want to... Okay. Yeah, they're, I've got deliveries to make, but... Yeah, no, you're fine. Yeah, um, there's somebody on the way. Yeah, I'm. thank you guys for yeah. taking care of it. The paramedics soon arrive, 
and the man is given a glucose pill for his low blood sugar. Nathan is soon back in the neighborhood making his deliveries. And although this medical emergency is harrowing, it teaches Nathan how the neighbors in this town look out for one another. One day, that could be me in that car. I could have a heart attack or something while driving down the road, and it's nice to know that there's people, like the people in my neighborhood, that are gonna come out and be there and help me. Thanks to Nathan and his neighbors, this driver avoids a road to disaster and is now on the road to recovery. Hello, sir. How you doing? Hi. Even in this age of cameras, door-to-door -door scams are common. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not interested. But for Gene Ebert, it all starts with a phone call. One winter afternoon, this retired 911 operator gets an unusual call at home asking for help. And it's a guy on there crying, saying that he's been in an accident and that he's my grandson, and now he was in a jail in New Jersey someplace. But instead of taking the bait, this veteran essential worker lays a trap of her own to stop the scammer from targeting her neighbors. And the last thing I said to him before I hung up was, I'll handle this, and I think that's kind of what hooked the guy into thinking that I was really falling for the scam. A common swindle. This man is trying to convince Jean that her grandson is in trouble and needs her money to help him out of a jam. Next thing I know, they're calling me back. He asked me um, if I could handle $8,000 worth of bail. So then I called the police and they sent two officers over. When the officers arrive, they hatch a plan with Jean to catch the scammer. Guy is still calling and then he says to me, I just so happen to have somebody 10 minutes away. And then the cops told me what to do. And within five minutes, a guy's walking up to my door asking me for uh, the envelope with the cash in it. Nervous to meet the potential thief, Jean follows the officer's instructions to the letter as soon as the scammer knocks on her door. Hello? Hi. I wanted the envelope to look legit, so I folded up a bunch of paper towels, put it inside the envelope. You hold it right? Okay. I'll be the one. Okay. He just took it, he turned around, went down two steps, and then he was in custody. My neighbors across the street were like, holy smokes, what the heck's going on over there? The suspect is arrested and charged with attempted grand larceny and is currently out on bail awaiting trial. Word of Jean's heroics quickly spreads around the neighborhood and even beyond. All of a sudden, everybody in Seaford, especially people I know, what happened, what happened? So I heard from a lot of my neighbors. I heard from my grandkids' friends. In fact, her neighbors are hoping she comes out of retirement. People are sending me messages. Can you go on patrol at night and look for the thieves? I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> so it just goes to show. Anyone can be a neighborhood hero. I stayed calm. I played his game. and. Uh, Apparently, he thought I was falling for him, but he fell for me. Hey, Ma'am, hey, your tires are blown. Your tire. Redding, California. A car with a blown tire drives down a quiet residential street while a concerned neighbor tries to alert the vehicle's driver. The neighbor, along with two friends, follow the woman and get her to pull over. But it's soon clear she has bigger issues than a flat. Are you guys loving me? You're taking care of me, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. She appears to be under the influence. Hey. Hey, little <laughs> oh, Don't fall over. No. Don't fall you know over. what? Oh. Yeah. Don't roll. You look like you're sick. I'm good. Are you okay? I love that guy. Well, you're, you're, you're like, you don't feel well. You're not sick. Have you had too much to Do drink? Do you have any pot? No. 
I have some. Crazy. <laughs> With you, though. Even though it looks as if the woman has already drunk enough, it seems like she still wants to continue the party. But her playful interaction with her neighbors is short-lived. Police soon arrive on the scene, and the woman tries to drive away. But the only thing fleeing is her cheery disposition. You're helping them. You're helping them. Oh, Get out of here. Car. Oh, the car. Get now. Wait. While the woman is charged with a DUI, thanks to her concerned neighbors, she does not injure herself or any other people out on the road. Remember, never drive under the influence. <laughs> Holiday spirits are being jolted this year. When neighbors come across a homeowner who appears to be hanging from his roof for dear life. But there's something about this struggling homeowner that looks familiar. All right, can you reach it? When this festive prank features on last season's Neighborhood Wars, it inspires another neighborhood joker to take the ruse up a rung or two. Meet Dangling Man an elaborate creation from the mind of a local dentist. Dangling Man is a mashup of a mannequin, PVC tubes, and a motion-activated motor attached to the pelvis, which causes the legs to swing wildly. The dentist adds Christmas lights and a ladder to the house, and as a final touch, plants a hidden speaker with his pre-recorded cries of help. It doesn't take long for the town to discover Dangling Man, and after a few days, the Ocean Port Fire Department pays the dentist a visit. But after the initial shock, the neighbors end up falling in love with Dangling Man, helping to ensure that he will be hanging out in this neighborhood for many holiday seasons to come.